Hi everyone, today we're going to talk about acids and bases. So we have three learning objectives for today. First, we want to know the properties of acids and bases. Second, we want to know how to read a chemical equation, which is a way of writing out a chemical reaction using the formulas of different chemicals. And third, we want to be able to predict the products of an acid-base reaction. So if I take an acid and a base and they react with one another, what will be created by that chemical reaction? Before we get started, take a moment, make sure that you are set up. You need some notebook paper to take notes with. Today's topic is acids and bases. And you need a pencil to take those notes down with. Uh, if you need to pause now to make sure you've got things, please do so. Uh, but once you've got stuff, get settled in and let's resume. All right. So the first thing to understand about acids and bases is that these are broad categories of chemical. When I say they're, ca they're categories, I mean there's lots of different things that are acids, and there are lots of different things that are bases. So at this point, you've maybe heard of a few acids. You might have heard of something like hydrochloric or hydrofluoric acid, and you might have heard of a few bases like sodium hydroxide, but there are lots and lots and lots of different bases and acids out there. The reason why this is a useful category both of these are useful categories, is because all acids tend to share a certain set of properties. So if you know that something is an acid and you know the properties of acids, you know a lot about that chemical already. Likewise, all bases share a different set of chemical properties. And so if you know that something is a base, you know a lot about that once you know a little bit about bases. So, uh, one thing that's worth knowing is that as a human being, you actually have two very sensitive chemical sensors sort of built in, and they are your tongue and your nose. I did wash my hands before this, don't worry. Um, you can use scent and taste to detect different chemicals. So when you taste something and it's sweet, that means that it has a sugar. Sugar is another broad category of chemical. Um, if you taste something and it tastes sour, that means that there is an acid present that your tongue is picking up on. Bases, on the other hand, tend to taste bitter. So they've got kind of this nasty, yucky, bitter taste to them. Um, so that's one way that you can use your senses to detect an acid or base. Uh, of course, you do want to be careful. You shouldn't go like drinking random things in beakers and chemistry labs, but there are lots of normal things that you would come into contact with on a daily basis that are acids or bases as well. Um, so if you have ever um, gotten some like cleaning solution on your hand or, you know, stuck your hand in a bucket that had maybe a little bit of bleach or something that was to clean in it, you might have noticed that the water felt kind of slick and slippery almost. Um, sort of in the same way that if you soap your hands up and you've got soapy water on your hands, it feels slicker or slipperier than just plain water on your hands does. That is actually one of the properties of bases. Bases feel slippery. So if you have something like soapy water, soap is actually a little bit basic. Uh, and that's why it has that really slick sensation to it. Um, acids, on the other hand, don't really have a special feel. They just feel like water if you touch them, right? There's no big difference there. Um, both acids and bases can react with one another. Um, so this is a special type of reaction, an acid-base reaction. And when acids and bases react with one another, you can predict what the products of those reactions, what will be created by those reactions, really easily. So whenever acids and bases react, you create two things. The first one is water and the second one is salt. So water and salt are the things that you produce when acids and bases react. Now there are other kinds of chemical reactions that acids and bases can do on a regular basis. For example, acids love to react with metals. And they will react with metals in a really damaging way. So one sort of optional fun activity you could do is if you happen to have a bottle of Coca-Cola or Pepsi or some other soda in the fridge, um, those things actually contain an acid called carbonic acid. Uh, and they contain a significant amount of carbonic acid. Uh, and if you take something metal like a nail and stick it in a jar full of uh, soda, you will 
pretty quickly, I mean over the course of a few days, see that nail really corrode down and it'll just break down into pieces. Um, that happens because acids love to react with metals. Uh, on the other side of things, bases uh, can actually react with flesh in really nasty ways. If you get a base on your hands during a chemistry lab, that can actually cause really nasty chemical burns. Um, so bases can react with flesh in really nasty ways. Um, both acids and bases can uh, change the colors of indicators. So indicators are special types of chemical which change colors in the presence of an acid or a base. One really common indicator out there is something called litmus paper. Uh, litmus paper is made out of a plant and uh, this plant, litmus, can change colors depending on whether or not something is acidic or basic. If you have blue litmus paper, it will turn red in the presence of an acid. And if you have red litmus paper, it will turn blue in the presence of a base. Uh, the last thing that I want to point out about acids is oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes, if you look at the cation in an acid, it will frequently be a hydrogen cation. That way, if you were to add this acid into some water, that hydrogen can pop off. Now you've got extra hydrogen ions in the water. That's what makes something acidic. Bases will oftentimes have extra hydroxide, OH negative, as the anion. So if you've got extra hydroxide anions, that's what makes something basic. Uh, take a moment now, go ahead and copy these two lists down into your notes. Pause this video and hit play when you're ready to move on. Ready? All right, let's go. So. Acids and bases are pieces of water molecules. Water, H2O, uh, is sometimes sort of more accurately thought of as HOH. Uh, oops, let me back that up a little bit. And the reason why I say you should probably think about water as HOH is because uh, that's sort of the way it's constructed. You've got a hydrogen here, that's this white ball, and oxygen here, that's the red one, and another hydrogen here, that's the white, H-O-H. Now, sometimes water molecules can actually sort of break down and these it can separate into these two separate pieces. This hydrogen cation can pop off. And when that happens, you'll be left with a hydrogen cation and a hydroxide, O-H negative. Again, this big red one is the oxygen. This white one is the hydrogen. This is an anion, this is a cation. Um, if you have water, you'll have about the same number of hydrogen cations and hydroxide anions. But if you add in an acid or a base, you could end up with extra of one or the other. If you have extra hydrogen cations, that means you have an acid. And if you have extra hydroxide anions, that means that you have a base. And it's important to note, that water mo molecules can break down into hydrogen cations and hydroxide anions, but also those cations and anions, the hydrogen cation and the hydroxide anion, they can actually join together to make water. And that's part of what happens in an acid-base reaction. In acid-base reactions, the hydrogen from the acid and the hydroxide from the base, they come together and they make water. Um, and then the leftover pieces of the acid and the base uh, will come together and they'll make some sort of salt. All right, so let's say I have a bunch of water. Uh, most of it's going to be H2O's, right? Nothing big there. Uh, but every once in a while you'll have some, just some ions floating around. That's not much going on. Uh, what can happen though is sometimes you can end up with uh, extra ions. And this would happen if you say added some, let's say you added HCl, that's a strong acid, hydrochloric acid, into a beaker of water. What would happen is the H's and the chlorines, the hydrogens and the chlorines would separate and I would have extra hydrogen cations in this solution. That would make it acidic. If I had something like sodium hydroxide, Na as my cation, OH negative as my anion, and I were to add that into the water, the sodium and the hydroxide would separate out from one another 
and I would have extra hydroxide anions in that solution, and that would make it basic. So, let's take a moment and talk about chemical equations and how you read them. Um, so, in chemical equations, you'll usually see lots of formula for different uh, chemicals. So, here we've got three different chemicals that are written down. We've got H2, that's hydrogen gas. We've got O2, that's oxygen gas. And we've got H2O, water. Uh, the, each of these is a chemical. And the chemicals are divided into one of two sides of this equation. You can see there's an arrow in the middle. The arrow tells you like, ah, here's when the reaction happens. So on the left hand side, I have the things that are reacting. So in this uh, equation, I've got hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and those two things are reacting with each other. On the right hand side, I have whatever is being produced, whatever is being created. Those are called my products. So in this particular equation, two molecules of hydrogen gas and one molecule of oxygen gas can come together uh, and they can produce two molecules of water. Um, some things that are important to note, you have the same number of atoms on both sides of the equation. On the left hand side, I have two molecules of hydrogen gas each hydrogen gas is two atoms, so in total I have four hydrogen atoms. On the right-hand side, I have two molecules of water, each of which has two hydrogen atoms, so there's four hydrogen atoms on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, I have one molecule of oxygen gas, but each oxygen gas has two oxygen atoms, so there's two oxygen atoms in total. And on the right-hand side, I have two molecules of water, each of which has one oxygen, which means in total I have two oxygens on the right-hand side. So if you think back to when we studied uh, the Lavoisiers, right, Marie and Antoine Lavoisier, they came up with something called the law of conservation of matter, and they said that matter is never created or destroyed, it only changes form. In a chemical reaction, chemicals are changing form. You are rearranging where the atoms are, but you're not ever creating new atoms and you're not ever destroying new atoms. So the main things to remember with chemical reactions is that your, if you've got multiple reactants, they'll be, celebrated, they'll be separated by a plus sign. Same will be true if there's multiple products, they'd be separated by a plus. Uh, the reactant side and the product side are separated by this arrow. And we've got reactants, the things that are reacting on the left, and products, the things that are produced on the right. Uh, likewise, we still have those coefficients. Those tell you how many molecules might be reacting. So here it takes two molecules of hydrogen gas reacting with one molecule of oxygen gas in order to produce two molecules of water. And the way I remember what a reactant is versus a product is by saying reactants react with each other to produce products. So reactants are what we start with, products are what we end up with. So here's some examples. Um, let's say we've got methane. So methane is CH4, one carbon and four hydrogens. And I, this little black circle represents the carbon, the white circles represent hydrogen. And we've got oxygen gas. Oxygen gas is represented by two red oxygens bonded together. And if I take methane and react it with oxygen gas, in, in particular with two molecules of oxygen gas, I can then rearrange those molecules into one molecule of carbon dioxide, CO2, and two molecules of water, H2O. And one thing I want to point out here is that there are the same number of molecule of sorry the same number of atoms of each element on both sides so if we count up our hydrogens you can see I have one two three four hydrogens on the left and on the right I have one two three four hydrogens on the right if we count up our oxygens I have one two three four oxygens on the left and one two three four oxygens on the right um, so we've got the same number of everything one carbon one carbon so the reactant side and the product side, 
they have the same number of atoms, both before and after a chemical equation takes place. So here's another example. Here we have two molecules of water. So each of these is a water molecule. So this is water. Oops, sorry, let me back that up. Uh, the red is oxygen, the white is hydrogen. And that can actually break down. So my only reactant here is water. It can break down into two molecules of hydrogen gas. So here's one molecule of H2 hydrogen gas. Here's another molecule of H2 hydrogen gas and one molecule of oxygen gas, which is made up of two oxygens. But if you count up the total number of molecules, they're the, or sorry, the total number of atoms, it's the same. Both sides of this equation, the reactant side and the product side, have one, two, three, four hydrogens, one, two, three, four hydrogens, and one, two, oxygens, one, two, oxygens. So in a chemical equation, if it's properly balanced, which is what we call it when we've set things up correctly so that we've got the same number of each atom on each side, um, you will have no atoms being created and no atoms being destroyed. They're only going to be rearranged. Now, acid-base reactions are really fun ones to think about because they follow a super predictable pattern. So when an acid and a base react, you are always gonna get the same two products, and those products are water and salt. So let's think about why, and to make this a little bit clearer, um, I'm gonna color code things. So let's say we've got two ionic compounds. The first one is HCl. That is an acid, hydrochloric acid, and I've done my cation hydrogen in purple, and my anion chlorine in green. Uh, so that's my acid. And it's gonna react with a base. So here's a nice strong base, sodium hydroxide. Sodium is the cation, hydroxide is the anion. You can see I've color coded them. Uh, what can happen in this acid-base reaction is the cations swap places. So hydrogen and sodium are basically trading spots. So hydrogen, instead of being with chlorine, is gonna come be with the hydroxide. So I end up with HOH. Oh, that's water, H2O, two hydrogens, one oxygen. And the sodium goes and bees with the chlorine, so I end up with NaCl, which is a type of salt, right? So uh, you can tell it's a salt because it's made out of a metal cation and a halogen anion. That's one of the easy ways to be like, oh, that's definitely a salt. So acid-base reactions oftentimes produce water and salt. Let's do another example. So here we've got hydrofluoric acid and lithium hydroxide. So what I've done is still an acid, still a strong acid in fact, still a base. And again, those cations just trade places. So the lithium comes and stays with the fluorine and the hydrogen goes and stays with the hydroxide. You are left with HOH, that's water, that's H2O and lithium fluoride, which is a type of salt. Here's another example. Here we've got hydrobromic acid, HBr. Again, a halogen and a hydrogen cation, a great way of making a strong acid. And again, we've got a strong base. This strong base, again, is an alkali metal, in this case potassium, uh, combined with a hydroxide anion. And when those two things react, they can create, again, water and a salt. The salt is made out of the cation from the base and the anion from the acid. So we've got potassium bromide as our salt this time. All right, so for this last one, I want you to try to predict this in your notes. So here we've got hydrogen iodide, again, a strong acid, and rubidium hydroxide, a strong base. And the question is, what will be produced? So I want you to look at the colors. Notice the pattern here. Notice that things have just been, we've just been trading the places of the cations. We haven't been creating any new uh, atoms, so nothing new is coming in. We haven't been destroying anything. Everything that was there before is still there now. It's just in a different position. So take a moment and write down in your notes what you think the product of this reaction is. Pause it if you need a little bit more time. All right, so here, the hydrogen cation will react with the 
hydroxide anion, and we will have water, same as before. And then our salt is going to be made with the cation from the base, so rubidium, and the anion from the acid, so iodine. So rubidium iodide will be our salt. So we end up with hydrogen hydroxide and rubidium iodide. That's all for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the lesson.